Joining me now, Republican presidential candidate, Senator Marco Rubio. Senator, thank you for being here. So it's not just widows and orphans trying to get into the country, as it turns out. Well, that statement you just played is baffling to me. I'm on the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee. We have the same, see the same intelligence the president does. And for him to say something like that really runs counter to information. We know that he has. First of all, they, there is evidence that they've tried to use some of the trafficking networks in, in Mexico, the Sinaloa cartel and others, to traffic people that are coming with a profile of Syrian refugees. But it goes beyond that. They're also actively recruiting people that could fit the profile, whether it's a doctor or a student visa to enter the United States. Uh, obviously, we saw them exploit a little known uh, provision in a visa to enter that killer that came in on a fiance visa. And then on top of that, you have the threat of homegrown violent extremists. So they have grown increasingly sophisticated in their knowledge and uh, ability to use the U.S. immigration system to insert uh, potential terrorists into this country or terrorists into this country. So given that, why do you oppose Donald Trump's suggestion that we should ban all Muslim immigration? Well, first of all, I don't believe it's constitutional to have a uh, religious on who we allow into the country. And for, so if you take it to its absurd extreme, the King of Jordan, who's an important ally in the war on terror, his son attends Georgetown University. He wouldn't, he's a Muslim. They're a direct descendant of Muhammad. They would not be allowed to enter the country. Second, it's not going to happen. You know, we have spent the better part of a week now reacting to this horrible tragedy and terrorist attack that occurred, and suddenly all the attention is focused on an idea that isn't going to happen. Let's mm -hmm. focus on things we can actually achieve that would be effective. Let's talk about uh, things that. Things like reforming our... Let's well, talk about let, that. Because last, night, we, last uh, night on Hannity, yeah. you were saying one of the things, one of the many things we have to worry about is homegrown, homegrown extremists, like we saw in the male terrorists right. out in California. That's a toughie. How, I mean, how? How do we get the yeah. NSA program didn't pick up on this guy? He was radicalized online right. from the look of it. How? How do we get at guys like that? Well, we need to get our authorities that we used to have back so you can paint a more complete picture of individuals and who else they're talking to and coordinating with. We know that they were radicalized as far back as 2013, so we need that full information. We're going to have to deal with, and, and we haven't yet kind of reconciled how to do this, but encrypted communication is now a way that terrorists are communicating. In fact, it's available to all Americans, and on the one hand, it protects you from uh, um, identity theft and things of this nature, but on the other hand, it's allowing terrorists to communicate in a way we never have access to. So we're going to have to deal with that as well. I actually believe that across this country there are Muslim communities that are not radicalized, that are, that are moderate, and we're going to need their help and support as well in identifying people that are potentially being radicalized. They need to become bigger participants in this mm -hmm. effort uh, to root out uh, what's happening across this country. I mean, it's a multifaceted problem. It's a threat unlike anything we've ever faced, and it will require a comprehensive approach. Uh, and that's what I hope we focus the next what? few weeks on, is learning as much as we can about this attack and, and, and reacting based on what we learned from it. What about the last time you were on, you suggested um, that we will have to look at cafes, diners, any facilities, you said, which we must close if they are inspiring radicals. That, of course, raises questions well, about that, First Amendment free speech and so on, and, and even Debbie Wasserman Schultz tonight hit you for that comment. Your response? Well, <laughs> the, the bottom line is, it's, it's not, my point was that all the talk at that time was about mosques. And my answer was, it's not just because they're mosques. It's not just mosques. It's any facility where radicalization in, is occurring. And that could be anywhere. So it, uh, what my argument was, that it's not just limited to mosques. How can you shut down a restaurant sitting there talking about, you know, Muhammad and Jihad? Yeah, it's not about shutting them down. It's about surveilling them. It's about being able to have access to these facilities, whether it's a mosque or a restaurant where people are being radicalized and being able to surveil them and identify individuals within them and learn about what's occurring. Um, you know, you, the, the markers are pretty clear. You go to a mosque, and if a mosque is handing out radicalized literature, if the preaching on Fridays after prayers is radicalized, uh, that gives a pretty strong indicator that there are people attending that place. Senator, thank you. Thank you.